On July 27th, Israel faced its worst civilian massacre since October 7th. Hezbollah launched an Iranian-made Falak rocket that hit a soccer field in the Druze town of Majd al-Shams, killing 12 children and injuring 50 others. I'm Eyo Pinto, and this is My State, a program about current events, my belief in God, and my journey in the Holy Land. And I'm standing today in Majd al-Shams community soccer field, where these innocent young lives were tragically and brutally taken. Israel's Druze population is estimated at 150,000, about 2% of the total population of Israel. Considered brothers in arms, the Druze population is by far the highest among Israel's non-Jewish minorities who serve in the IDF. Since October 7, 10 Druze soldiers and officers have been killed in combat, eight in the fighting in the Gaza Strip and two in the northern border with Israel and Lebanon. The Druze have also suffered damage to their homes and agricultural land in the Golan Heights, where most of them live as a result of Hezbollah shelling in the exchanges of fire on the northern border. But the Majd al-Shams attack was by far the most devastating blow, not only for the Druze community, but for every Israeli who collectively grieved the young lives that were lost and saw the strikes as a national tragedy. The locals of Majd al-Shams said that the soccer field was the center of life for those kids who were obsessed with soccer and whenever anyone was looking for his kid, chances are they would come here first. The appropriate response was heavily debated in the days following the strike, including intensive diplomacy attempts aimed at curbing Israel's retaliation, fearing that it could lead to the region snowballing into an all-out war. Ultimately, Fuad Shukal, Hezbollah's most senior military commander and a right-hand man to the organization's leader, Hassan Asrallah, was killed by the IDF in a strike which blew a large hole into the side of an eight-story apartment building in southern Beirut. Israel said he was responsible for the deadly rocket attack on Majd al-Shams. I am meeting Naila, a grieving mother who tragically lost her daughter, Alma, in this once serene and peaceful town at the foot of the Hermon Mountain. I am Naila. I'm a mother of three beautiful children, two boys and one girl. May she rest in peace. Alma, the sandwich. Brian is the oldest one. And Ilian, the youngest one. Mm -hmm. They are so close to each other. They are 10, 11 and a half and 13 years old. I am a teacher in the elementary school, math teacher. I believe in family. Yeah. This is the most important thing in my life is taking care of my family, giving love, support, and emotions to, to be by their side all the time. We have two major chance, before 27th of July and after 27th of July. It's a small village with a nice and lovely people. We love each other, support each other, care about each other. It's nice and beautiful in winter because of its snow, Hermon Mountain here. And in spring, it's all of it covered green color, delicious fruits. We love this place. We love to live here. I, in person, didn't imagine for a second to face this situation. All the time, my husband told me, this mountain will protect us. But it happened. It yeah. happened. I remember that day was a normal day. I brought Alma breakfast to her room, woke her up, kissed her. And she told me, Mom, I feel like having a breakfast in the balcony. So this is what we did. Later that day, I, I was attended in a relative's wedding. And their house had a view of Majdal Shams. I was holding the cell phone. It was a uh, warning sirens went on. One, two, three, explosion. Oh. My heart started to beat and my tears fell down. I knew that kids, Ryan and Lian, were here in the field. This is what they do, as usual, yeah. every day. So I started running and 
Brian called me. Mom, we're okay. Don't worry about us. We're okay. So I called Elma. There was no answer. I thought she was at home dancing, sleeping, watching a, a film, as usual. I went down to my house and went up to the second floor, wishing to hear her voice. I opened the door. Alma, where are you? Please let me hear your voice. I opened the first door, the second door, the third one. There's no Alma. So I went down to the field here and uh, asked the police uh, if they saw a girl, one seven centimeters, blue eyes. They told me, no, there's no girls among the victims. But I didn't imagine for a one person that she's here. Because usually she's a basketball player. She didn't... Not soccer. No, not Basketball. soccer. Not, not soccer. But my heart's still telling me something else. I'm not, I'm not comfortable about it. Can you imagine at this time, Ayman had arrived here and found Alma, her body. He carried her in his arms, his father. I didn't know. All of them knew that, but no one had the courage to tell me this kind of news. And then I, I saw, I saw my little angel sleeping and resting in this. She slept just like the way she used to sleep, on her chest, or with a beautiful face, her angel face. I remember I started to cry, cry a lot, telling her things. But the most important thing, I told her, God will give you mercy and I wish to send you nice people and kind souls just like the way you were. It was a bad day, just like living a dream that you wish to wake up from it. I see that Kids are still playing soccer in this field, and somehow life goes on. Right. So where, where does the courage come from for you? God is stronger than anyone else. This is what God wants. Alma, she's a played basketball, but when the racket falls down, she was... She played soccer, yeah. This is destiny. Her destiny. She got her destiny, and we believe in that. I have two children, you know that? And I didn't mention it, it before, they were in the field. Two minutes before all my council. God saved them to me. I got a lot of things to, to be thankful for and grateful. I know Alma broke my heart. And her soul is always with me, all the time. Mm -hmm. I was lucky to have her, you know, that she was a special one, a special girl. But with all the beauty that she got from God, she was humble. On her paintings, she used to write, On this earth, there's something worth to live. All the 12 angels, we call them angels of peace. All of them were united by peace, love, joy, and energy of their life. This is their message. And we, as parents, as community, have to carry on their voices to the entire world. We are guests in this life. We are guests. No one know when death knock our doors. No one. So we have to live the moment, love and peace, first and foremost. And we have to believe in God. What happened here united all the religions. All the country. All the country. Yes. I met uh, president of Israel. Mm -hmm. I met Prime Minister, Knesset members. All of them want peace and love. All of them. God is so, so kind. Well, that's beautiful to hear and I'm really encouraged to see your hope. This is what I'm taking from talking to you. That God, God is in control in every situation and we should have peace because He's in charge. Just leave it to God and love your family. It seems like Alma really had an effect on, on this community, on her family, and she really left her mark. Well, thank you for sharing, and just wanted you to know that we have you know, millions of people around the world that are praying for you, and now they heard your story and the story about this community, and they will keep praying 
for peace in Israel, in this region, and for your family in Thank particular. You. Thank you so much. As we remain on high alert, Israel's message is unequivocal. Every life in this country is sacred, whether Jewish, Christian, Muslim, or Druze. We will defend each and every one of our people with all of our strength. So please unite in prayer. Pray for the families of these children that lost their loved ones to terrorism. Pray for all the civilians on both sides that are affected by this terror organization, if it's Hezbollah in the north or Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Please pray for the IDF soldiers that are risking their lives every day defending the country of Israel. Please pray for our allies in this region and pray for the leadership that they have wisdom to know what to do next. And the most important thing that all of you can do is unite in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.